My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people want to make friends. I'm just trying to save you a little money. Because my job is not just to entertain, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Everybody keeps asking, what does the Fed really want? After a tough day where the Dow slipped 340 points, as if we lost 1.16%, and the Nasdaq tumbled 1.47%. <laughs> In response to lower than expected jobless claims and a much stronger than expected ADP private payrolls report, well, this is something that you and I need to address. We gotta figure this out. So on the eve of tomorrow's key non-farm payroll report, you gotta, gotta think, do they want to see a spike in unemployment? Is that what they want? Do they want to keep, do they want to see you make less money? Do they want to plummet in wages? Do they want millions of people thrown out of work in a ruined economy? No. Not exactly. The feds, they got a plan. They want you to reach for this pizza, not for this pizza. They want you to buy this coffee, not this coffee. This cream cheese, not this cream cheese. This beer, not this beer. They want you to buy these chips, not these chips. Nuts, how about this? They want you to, well, forget these. They want you to buy these. Yeah, they want you to trade down. They want you to save money. You add the prices of the name brand goods here. You know what? You know how much it costs? $52.11. How about the, the, no, not the nice, the nice brand, the generic brand? Just $25.59. What a difference. See, if people were all to switch to the generic, it would force the branded guys to cut price. And that, that is what they want to have happen. That is their plan. That's how the Fed can beat inflation. But they don't have many tools to change it, so you suddenly decide, you know what? I want some nice roasted party peanuts, not the planters. See, if many people feel confident and go for the high price basket, the Fed loses. If they want consumers spending less, if they want them to buy this stuff, they have to make you so worried about losing your job or at least not getting a raise or, heaven forbid, get fired as part of a reduction in force. See, as long as we have a strong labor market, there's a good chance people will keep paying up for the high quality stuff. That's what they're gonna do. Including this beer, made by Constellation Brands. By the way, the worst performing stock in the S&P today, more on that later when we speak to the CEO, Bill Newlands. <laughs> hey, what's the matter with me? One laugh on a really miserable day. One laugh, give me a break. <laughs> as long as consumers can afford it, producers will keep raising prices to boost pro uh, profitability. Hey, that's what happened with ConAgra. They make this stuff. Yeah, the packaged food company that had terrific sales and earnings even as the volumes declined more than 8%. Why? Price increases. Nobody stopped buying this stuff. They're still buying it. They don't care. They're paying. Now, the Fed isn't necessarily targeting cream cheese or potato chips. It's trying to break the cycle of inflation. These supermarket items are a microcosm of the broader economy. Once people start trading down the cheaper knockoff versions, the major brands will not be able to get away with endless price increases. And let me tell you something. You want to see endless price increases? This stuff, is there any level of this stuff? This doesn't stop. It doesn't stop going higher. I'm sick of it. My... That was bad. That was bad. I, for... I thought I was at my old set for a second. Um, anyway, okay. Um, you can do the same. Ooh, that was really bad. You can see the same analysis of real estate. The Fed wants you to stop paying up for luxury or maybe to just stay put in your old home rather than buying a new one. That's the big ticket version of buying the cheaper knockoff cream cheese that I just threw and ruined that $10,000 camera that I'm going to have to hear a lot about tomorrow. That's the big ticket version of buying. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, I think we're definitely headed. Whoa. I think that's definitely where we're headed, especially with much higher mortgage rates. 
Same story for cars. The number of people with a monthly car payment of more than $1,000 has now reached a record high. Better to stick with your old car, even if it's a jalopy. Mine's 16 years old. I'm not going to get a new one. Plus, unlike food, the Fed's making it more expensive to get financing for these bigger ticket items. So housing and cars should be under a lot more pressure. So far, home sales are way down in volume, but not price. Not yet. History says that happens next. Car sales haven't rolled over yet. But at these financing rates, it's bound to happen. And while the Fed isn't in there making cream cheese more expensive, you can definitely feel the pinch if you look at the interest rate on your credit card. Why does all this matter? What does it mean? So if you buy these peanuts or some other, what does it mean? Well, because tomorrow we get a non-farm payroll number, and if it doesn't show higher higher unemployment and with no wage growth, the Fed will need to keep aggressively raising interest rates, and you're going to eat these. Which, by the way, just one second, I want to check something. I, 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 I have a brainstorm. Do they, don't they look a lot like these? Anyway, that's the point, you see? While we're making progress fighting commodity inflation, the Fed's most concerned with wage inflation because wages spread through the whole system. And they've made no progress on wage inflation. We've still got a massive labor shortage. As long as that continues, the Fed will keep ratcheting up rates until uh, actual businesses like the supermarkets forget about raising wages and start laying people off en masse, like we've seen in the last 24 hours with Salesforce and Amazon. I know that sounds harsh, but fighting inflation is tricky. Initially, we get a worldwide wave of inflation because supply chains were messed up by COVID. Remember that? We didn't have enough logistic capacity when the global economy bounced back. But once those supply chain snafus got solved, inflation didn't come around. It stuck around. Companies didn't have to cut prices because employment was so strong that the consumer could afford to pay more. Every time they tighten, the Fed's been hopeful that you'll finally switch to the cheaper knockoff brands, forcing everybody else to cut prices. Lots of people worry that, that, that that's exactly what happened to, to Modelo, right? Which is why Constellation parent uh, got its parent got crushed today. I mean, they're, they're thinking you're going to switch to natural ice, the big one. No. All right, that's not the impression I get from the quarter or the conference call, but let's save that for later when we speak to CEO Bill Newlands. In the end, all of this is a hypothetical, uh, theoretical kind of thing. And, you know, I hate hypothetical. I hate theoretical. What you need to know is that when consumers decide to trade down, companies like Conagra or Constellation might have to lower price. And that's how we beat inflation. And while that kind of thing is great for consumers, it's terrible for you, the shareholder. Same way with lower home prices. It's good if you're looking for a house, but it's awful if you own shares of home builder Lenore. In other words, there is no free lunch for you, the investor. You can win at the supermarket or the car dealership or the housing development, but that means you're going to lose in your stock portfolio. Worse, some would say the Fed's actually targeting your stock portfolio itself because they know people will spend less money when they feel less wealthy. Maybe retirees will even come back to the workforce if they see enough damage in their stock market portfolio. The Fed's basically trying to create financial insecurity because that's the only tool they really have to beat inflation. If they make people feel more insecure, maybe that'll help drive down the cost of labor, a more benign way of getting a bigger labor pool uh, compared to mass layoffs. Obviously, it's not great that the Fed's doing it this way, but it's really all they can. In fact, it's just plain dismal, hence the scientific name for economics. Nobody wants to root for layoffs or lower stock prices. But the alternative is persistently high inflation, endless price increases for everything. Nobody wants that either, especially the people not wealthy enough to own a lot of stock. And that's millions upon millions of people. Now, the hope is the Fed can beat inflation without raising the cost of borrowing so high that nobody buys much of anything. We will hunker down, stop traveling, stay at home, subsisting on knockoff store brands. If the Fed is much tested to tighten that too much. We get tons of layoffs in the January recession. That's called the hard landing. Soft landing, that comes from price stabilization. The job market cools, layoffs spike, prices hold. But no matter what, unless companies get more productive, if they make, they'll make less money than we thought. Is that what happened to Constellation Brands? We will find out. Is that what's happening in Tesla? Walgreens? Workday? We need to know. As always, I finish the show with there's a bull market somewhere. And right now, that's in the recession-proof drug stocks. But you know what? Maybe they're only recession resistant, not recession proof. We've got to speak to Lisa Gill, highly respected healthcare uh, services analyst from JP Morgan, later in the show on the eve of her mayor health care conference. The bottom line, though, right now it does seem 
like there's just no place to hide except treasuries. If this keeps up, the Fed will indeed win its war on inflation the hard way. And if you own stocks, your best hope is that they win sooner rather than later. Let's speak to Gorov in Massachusetts. Gorov. Hey, Jim. Happy New Year. Uh, first time caller and a member of the investing club. Um, oh, I thank you. To, thank you. Thank you. I started listening to your show about two years ago, and since then I haven't missed a day. Uh, thanks to you and your amazing team for what you all do day in, day out. Um, I have you. a question on FedEx. Uh, I know you had the new CEO, Raj, on your show a couple of quarters ago. I bought the stock in August 2021 at $276 a share. My question to you is that me being a long-term investor, what do you think if I should hold on to the stock that has a dividend? I think you should to- buy more. Go, Rob, I want you to buy more. I think that they have a CEO... Uh, this Raj Subramanian is doing such a good job. It's a tough environment. You're thinking long term. And that means buy, not sell, not hold. Fed X Corp. All right. Right now, it seems like there's nowhere else to hide but treasuries. If this keeps up, the Fed will win its war on inflation. But that's the hard way. Oh, man, money tonight. Constellation Branch. As I said, felt on higher expenses in the company's beer division, a lot of other little things. I'm going to find out the latest from the CEO because, man, that stock was down the most of it. Yes, B. Then it was tough to find them, but out of last year's NASDAQ winners, is there anything worth owning? I'm going to give you a handful of names I'm watching. And ahead of the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference I just mentioned, I am talking to Lisa Gill to find out what we should be looking for. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.